Excellency Speaker, Dr. Chico Luveni, Excellency Prime Minister Baini Maraman, members of the Parliament of the Republic of Fiji, Nishan Bola, and Namaste. Two months ago, Fiji Jan voted in extraordinary numbers to elect this parliament. Six months ago, Indians participated in the largest election in the history of this world. Today, I stand here grateful for this special gift the honor to be among you to speak to this new parliament in celebration of democracy and to reaffirm our friendship. India is a nation of more than a billion. Fiji, a nation of a million. We are located in a different oceans. But what unites us today is our democracy. The diversity of the society, our creed that all human beings are equal, and our commitment to the liberty, dignity, and rights of every individual. What also links us today is that we both have women as a speaker of our parliaments. You have done better than us. One in every seven members in this parliament is a woman. In India, it is just one in nine. So I hope we can match you the next time, and I hope we can both do better in future. People in Fiji have a different histories, ethnicities, languages, and religions, but they stand together as one nation of Fijians with one voice and one vision and one aspiration. In both nations, we have vested our power in our people. Your constitution begins with, be the people of Fiji. Indian Constitution begins with the same simple words, be the people of India. And what a constitution you have framed. It is a constitution that not only guarantees freedoms and rights of the citizen, but also to ensure that basic needs and empower them. From the right to life, liberty, dignity, equality, and freedom of religion, to the right to education, information, work, health, food, water, to the rights of children and the disabled. This is a constitution that reflects the will of an enlightened nation, the journey to this milestone and struggles and setbacks. <coughs> but the roads you have chosen has won you admiration around the world and the support of the people here. Honorable members, Fiji is a shining example of a small nations that can successfully pursue great ambitions because 
what makes a nation successful is not its size or its population but its vision and its values today fiji is a nation that has used its economic resources well you have been a strong voice on behalf of the pacific islands and a hub of this region you led the g77 with vision and statesmanship your soldiers have served with outstanding professionalism in un peacekeeping missions in some of the world's most dangerous sports and you are playing an influential role in shaping the global dialogue on climate change there are many in india who wish vijay singh were the indian colors on the gold course honorable members for india fiji will always have a special place the tide of history brought many from india to your shores it has forced our ties of culture and kinship but our relationship today stands on a much broader base of our shared values and our common interests as developing countries and now together we were partnering in making history you graciously hosted indian scientists in fiji for tracking our mars mission mangalayan it was the only mission in the world to succeed in the first attempt i convey today the gratitude of the people and the scientists of india this is simple yet to profound act of cooperation reflects the boundaries boundless possibilities in our relationship if we choose to seek that our trade and investment ties have been modest our relationship in science education and culture could be stronger yet there are examples of our partnership that should inspire us our cooperation in upgrading our sugar mills or the public private partnership in the area of healthcare as we have collaborated in running hospitals here we can also extend our cooperation in pharmaceuticals and traditional medicines at fiji adjust to the changing global markets india is prepared to be your partner in making your existing industry stronger and finding new opportunities for youth for countries like ours village and small and medium scale industries are the source of enterprise and employment today i am pleased to announce a grant of 5 million us dollars to strengthen and modernize fiji's village small and medium industries we will also provide a line of credit of 70 million dollars for a cogeneration power power plant at raro sugar mill agriculture supports a majority of the population in india and fiji offer our expertise and assistance in increasing productivity in the agriculture sector as the largest producer of milk in the world india can help develop your dairy industry which can also contribute to your exports 
in areas like fisheries, textiles and garments, and gems and jewelry, we can expand our trade. In this digital age, every nation can be part of the global information technology industry. And it is a dream that youth around the world share. It is an industry that depends on ideas and skills. It offers a great path to prosperity and it has a light carbon footprint. We have pleased to set up a center for excellence in information and technology here in Fiji. We are prepared to work with you to build a digital Fiji and to equip your youth to integrate Fiji into the global IT network. We will also depend our cooperation in education and training and we will double the number of our scholarships. Today, I propose that we work together to harness the potential of space technology for governance, economic development, conservation, climate change and natural disasters. There are times when we think of each other as distant lands, separated by ocean and seven time zones. But think of the days when travel was difficult. That did not deter brave people from traveling over the seas in search of a new life. Distance to me is irrelevant in a world of fiber optic cables and satellite links. We are only as far away as the click of a mouse of the, or the call button of a phone. In any case, I direct flight today can take you from Fiji to most places in India. And I say this more to my people than to you. Fijians have been steady in investing in India. We in India have not paid enough attention to this beautiful land of warm people and immense potential. This must change. We must tra make travel easier between our two countries. For this reason, I have taken a small step in a extending visa on arrival to Fijians in India as you have done for India, for Indians in Fiji. And if you want to attract more Indians to enjoy the magnificence of your islands and the warmth of your hospitality, you should invite Bollywood to shoot their films in Fiji. Honorable members of parliament, we have spoken of vast opportunities. We also share many common challenges. For you, climate change is not a matter of debate, but a basic question of existence. India, too, is a nation of a long coastline and more than 1,000 islands, a nation that is nurtured by monsoon rains and the Himalayan glaciers. We, too, are facing the sharing impact of climate change and we spend more than 6% of our GDP in adapting to its consequences. Now, each of us must shoulder our own responsibilities. We cannot stand aside and take to action. Technology has made it possible. We do not have to seek old pathways to prosperity. In India, we have a comprehensive national plan and strategy to both mitigate and adapt to climate change. And I have a deep personal commitment to it. And we look forward to working with Fiji and areas such as wind and solar energy. But it is also equally important that the global community accepts 
its responsibility and implements its commitment. It should not become one in which the strong ship the burden on the others or impose the responsibilities of their excesses on the choices that other makes. It should not be an issue of economic advantage or trade competitiveness of one over the other. The world had agreed on a beautiful balance of collective action, common but differentiated responsibilities that should form the basis of continued action. This also means that the development countries, the developed countries fulfill their commitments for funding and technology transfer. India has stood shoulder to, to shoulder with Fiji and the small island developing states in seeking a fair and urgent response from the international community. For a sustainable future, we also have a shared stake in a peaceful, cooperative and prosperous Asia and Pacific regions. Stretching from the Indian Ocean through continental Asia into Pacific, this is a region of enormous dynamism and opportunities, but also a region with many challenges. Fiji is a leader in the region and a strong voice in the developing world. Together, we can also work for a future in the region in which there is an equal place for all nations and a climate of peace and tranquility. I thank Prime Minister and Fiji for the leadership in hosting my meeting with the Pacific leaders later today. Let us join hands to create an ocean of opportunity that stretches from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Sometimes our relations have been adrift. Let us chart a new course. Let us start a new era. When it does not take another 33 years for an Indian Prime Minister to visit Fiji, when Fijians and Indians work with each other from the comfort of fa familiarity and the ease that comes with the habit of regular partnership. When we draw strength from the ties of history and the bounds of emotions, seek new purpose in our many shared interests and seize our new opportunities. Thank you, Vinaka. Thank you. Dhaniwaad.